It is past 5.30 and it is time for me to call the regular meeting of Greenwood County Council the Tuesday, September the 1st, 2020 to order. In accordance with the Freedom of Information Act, the date, the time, the location, and the agenda of this meeting has been posted on the front entrance of the Greenwood County Courthouse and also on the front entrance of the Greenwood County Library. Copy of that agenda has been made available to the media and also has been posted on the county's website. I'm going to ask Councilwoman Melissa Spencer to give our invocation, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand with me. Let's pray. Dear Lord, as we gather today, we ask that you would be in our midst. Thank you for the opportunity to serve the community and for those who serve us. I lift up our schools, our state and local officials, law enforcement, military, health care workers, emergency workers, and others in service. Cover our community with peace. Unite our efforts to make right decisions as we support this county. Increase our compassion. Let us lead with honor, respect, and wisdom. May you bless those who took the time to gather here today. Help us to be wise in the decisions that we make for the good of all those who have placed their trust and confidence in our leadership. And keep us united as a council and a community. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At 4 o'clock today, this council went into executive session to discuss a number of matters that is allowed to be discussed uh, uh, in closed doors. I'm going to ask council to give me a motion and a second that we adjourn that executive session. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Second. Templeton, second by Dr. Motes. Any discussion? All in favor? And we are out of the executive session. We have the minutes of the August 18, 2020 uh, regular meeting. Uh, are there any changes to those minutes? If there are not, then we need a motion and a second that the minutes be approved. Motion by Ms. Childs. Second by Ms. Spencer. I heard on my right. All in favor? And those minutes are approved. Um, we have no presentations tonight by anyone. Um, I am going to delay the public comments uh, later on in the agenda because I think uh, those comments are uh, the people who have signed up to speak uh, are wanting to speak to one specific uh, item on our agenda and we would, uh, when we get to that item we allow the planning director to give us some information then we will allow these people to speak under the public comment section. If anybody has a problem with that, let me know. Uh, we have no letters, nothing sent to us that needs to be read into the record. No, sir. Then we're going to have a public hearing, and the public hearing is on Ordinance 2020-18, which authorizes the execution <coughs> and delivery of fee and lieu of tax agreements by and between Greenwood County and Southern Current LLC with respect to certain economic development property in the county, whereby such property will be subject to certain payment and lieu of taxes, including the provision of certain special source revenue credits and other matters related to. Before I open it for comments, um, my own attorney, would you provide us with some information? We usually give a little bit more details on the third and final reading. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. This is Project Clouds, um, obviously now known to the public as Southern Current. This is five solar projects located throughout the county. One is a $50 million project located in Bradley. That will be for a 35 megawatt um, solar facility. The other four are $3.1 million investments. Those are for two megawatt facilities. And again, those are um, located in various 
um, locations throughout the county. The agreement provides for a 30-year um, fee in lieu of tax agreement, as well as an SSRC. The SSRC is going to be a, a floating calculation such that the company has a flat $3,750, $3,750 payment per megawatt. So on the $50 million project, it'll be a $131,000 tax payment. And on the two megawatt projects, it'll be a $7,500 tax payment. Um, and those are the, the general terms. And there's a few items later on the agenda that I can address at that time. You've heard the explanation of the county attorney before. I go to the public. Does any council member have a question of the county attorney? If not, then I will open it up for a public hearing and ask, is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor of Ordinance 2020-18? Is there anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to this ordinance? If not, I will close the public hearing and ask council, what is your pleasure? This is third and final reading. Move to approve, Chair. Second. Was that Mr. Lane? Yes, sir. Mr. Lane and Mr. Templeton. Motion by Mr. Lane, second by Mr. Templeton. Any further discussion? All in favor? And that is unanimous. Final reading. We also have third readings, not a public hearing, but we have third readings on Ordinance 2020-19, which amends the zoning ordinance so that a 12.48 acre portion of an 82.06 acre tract owned by RMP LLC located at 128 Rock Church Road Northwest in Greenwood is changed from I-1 Light Industrial to AG-3. Um, Phil or the county attorney, do you have anything to add to that before we ask council to vote? Are you ready to vote? What is your pleasure? So moved. Motion by Mr. Allison. Second by Ms. Charles. Any questions? All in favor? And it is approved. The next uh, third reading is Ordinance 2020-21, which amends the Greenwood County Zoning Ordinance. So to provide standards for mobile food truck vending as a conditional use and C2 general commercial, I-1 light industrial and RDD rural development. This is third and final reading. Um, Mr. Lindler, do you have anything to add? Has there been any changes? Mr. the city has taken any action on this item? Um, my, my question, Mr. Lindler, um, C2 General Commercial, I-1 Light Industrial and RDD, um, does that allow adequate uh, locations? I mean, is that, uh, what about other zoning classifications? Why did you rule it out of there? The only other zoning classifications of a commercial nature would be office professional, neighbor commercial, um, uh, uh, I-2, heavy industrial. Uh, beyond that, everything else is residential or agricultural or rural of some kind. So beyond that, uh, you know, those are the areas that, that are extensive as far as retail, restaurants, um, those type of uses. And the reason I ask that, and I think I need to... To, to declare this, you know, I was asked after the last meeting when we rejected the zoning of the property uh, on Cokesbury Road, uh, the question was asked of me, could that same person take their food truck there and operate it and sell pizza? And according to this, she could not. Correct. And you're saying possibly OP? No. No, you don't think OP one. I don't think office professional or neighbor commercial are um, substantial enough to handle the traffic that the volume like a food truck would would uh, bring to the areas. Okay. The traffic volume feel is what you just said. Well, as far as density of, of commercial uses as well, um, those type of like office professional, for instance, and neighborhood commercial, are small scale in nature. So, or something like this that has a large amount of volume and brings numbers of people um, to these locations, such as a food truck, that's just not in keeping with that character of the area. Um, you would want to encourage food trucks on your main thoroughfares 
um, areas that have high traffic volumes, you wouldn't want to encourage those uh, close to neighborhoods. And does this mirror the language that is used inside of the city? Yes, sir. And the same same typical kinds of zones besides the RDD. So what we are voting on third reading is identical to what is, is presently being enforced inside of the city. Yes, so sir. these people won't have two different standards to abide. I mean, it's pretty much... It is zones. currently what is on in, in the books for the city right now, minus the distance requirement. The city's looking at it right now, has not made any determinations, not even taken a first reading on, on that, that issue. So I can't say specifically, so be the if you pass it tonight, what, they, what, what we are, what the city of Greenwood has uh, planned over the next few months. Any other council member have a question? You ready to vote? Thank you, Phil. Sure. This is third and final reading to provide standards for mobile food truck, truck vending and C2 General Commercial, I-1 Light Industrial, and RDD Rural Development Districts. What is your pleasure, Council? Off your motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Templeton, mm -hmm. second by Mr. Motes. Any further discussion? All in favor? And we're all supporting that third and final reading. Thank you, Phil. <coughs> Our new business is consideration of the contract for addition and renovations of the Medic 30 EMS station on Highway 25 South as part of the Fire Master Plan portion of the capital project sales tax. Josh Skinner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Council. Uh, I'd like to talk real quick about the uh, Fire Service Master Plan and the capital project sales tax. Uh, number five. On the capital project sales tax list, 14.2 million total overall. We split that money into four different phases: phase one and phase two of the employee collective. We start phase three in uh, 2021 next year. Uh, phase one is now complete uh, with the completion of the Carter Road Volunteer Fire Service uh, Station, Station 62. Uh, this station. Uh, we got CO last week, the signs were put up on Friday, and we're just waiting for final approval from our, from our insurance, and then we'll be able to move the power trucks in. That should happen this week. The station added 198, not 198 address points to the county's fire coverage list, and the total price tag furnished came out to be $268,548. Um, can we ask, or can I ask, Steve, when will there actually be trucks and when there will be operations out of that station? Uh, either someone, the manager, or someone. Next week. <laughs> Next week, see the insurance police, is it right? Yes. That's, that's the only one. You already have that where the trucks and people will be operating out of that station? Yes, we intend to move the truck here as soon as the station is set up as insured and will be operation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we're moving into phase two now. We have um, phase two is uh, 3.7 million. Uh, 2.6 of that is going for our fire truck payments for new fire trucks. The remainder of that, about 1.17, will go to these next four fire stations that we're planning on building. Uh, one on Highway 221, uh, Medic 30 renovations that I'm about to talk about. One on Andrew Shackles Road and one in a Shoals Junction area. Once we get all of these stations built, we'll have 99.6% of the county covered as far as fire coverage. Uh, the plan is to renovate Medic 30 right now to add a parking space for two fire trucks, and this will add 208 ad address points uh, in Greenwood County that currently do not have fire coverage. Um, this is Medic 30 now. Uh, EMS station. You see the carport in the rear that houses the uh, uh, rescue vehicle. That carport has uh, been removed, and that is where we plan to build the new garage for the fire trucks. We see our proposed site plan layout. Uh, yeah, the blue box in the back is a 40 by 40 foot metal garage, two bays, enough room for two fire trucks. And the red outline would be the new six inch reinforced concrete driveway uh, going out to Highway 25 South. 
Um, we'll also do some minor cosmetic renovations at the connection into the uh, current EMS garage. Um, we're also planning to renovate the kitchen and the bathroom uh, while we're there. So we put the project out we did on June 23rd. We received five bids on July 24th. The Gordon Group LLC out of Greenwood was a low bid at 222480 uh, I don't know if you can see the high bid was 418000 so that kind of gives you the range. Uh, the Boring Group was the only company out of Greenwood that bid. The rest were out of Columbia, Augusta, North Augusta, and Rock Hill. Uh, I think you have a, a copy of the contract in your packet. Uh, but basically, it includes uh, the, the two bay metal garage, 40 foot by 40 foot, uh, the kitchen, the bathroom, and uh, existing. Garage upgrades, which includes a uh, new ventilation fan, a new heater, um, painting, new floor, and a, uh, and of course, the big cost is a six inch reinforced concrete driveway from the garage to Highway 25. Uh, we have to answer any questions you might have. Council, do you have questions? I, I couldn't hear who you said got the. the who won the bid? It's the Gordon Group out of Greenwood. It's the same company that's done the first two fire station. Okay. That's Lynn Doodle's the general contractor. Okay. Charles. Yeah. Charles. We presently do not run any fire out of that station, Steve. Most of the gun. Um, we chose that site. Because it's, it's on the main road, but uh, utilizing that level space, we utilize maybe 50 of them, 25 mobile headed where so we do have we do have some fire truck there. The, the benefit of being able to, to use this building is, is I can put 24 hour personnel in here as it is without having to do anything. If we build a new station that has 24 hour personnel, we're going to have to make some life safety improvements on point the systems and such as that. So this building, we can use it now. It's, it's in a good location. Would that be considered part of Highway 34's? Um, yes, it is. This is part of it. Any questions by council? <coughs> We're being asked to approve the contract as presented by Josh. Uh, are you ready to vote on it? So we'll move, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Motes. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Lane. Any further discussion? All in favor of approving the contract, and that is unanimous. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. We have consideration and approval of contingency agreement by and between Greenwood County and Southern Current, formerly known as Project Labs. Madam Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This relates back to the fee agreements that you just approved. Um, one of the questions doing five different, different fee agreements that are all based on a total investment of 60 plus million was um, how do we handle clawbacks? <coughs> what this agreement does is it makes all of the agreements contingent on that $50 million agreement so that if the company does not meet the $50 million commitment for Bradley Solar, then they don't get the incentives on any of the other agreements. Um, so, you know, if they do $45 million for Bradley, the other four, they don't get any incentives for. Now, if the other ones, they don't make the agreement, those are standalone. They'll just be handled by the terms of the individual agreements. I know when we were uh, discussing, discussing the, the incentives, uh, the callback uh, part was a very, um, concern of ours, and it seems like that you worked it out so that um, they've got to do the 50 million or they don't qualify for the other incentives. To me, that sounds good. Um, are you ready to vote on it? May I have a motion? Move to approve, Chairman. Motion by Mr. Lane, second by Ms. Spencer. Ms. Child. Ms. Child, I heard somebody down there. I'm sorry. Ms. Childs. Any further discussion? You ready to approve this contingency agreement? All in favor? And that is unanimous. We have a resolution 20-22 
which amends the master agreement governing the Greenwood Newberry Industrial Park, which includes uh, certain real property located in Greenwood County and pertaining to Southern Current LLC. We're just allowing these to become part of the multi county industrial park. What is your pleasure? So moved. Motion by Mr. Allison. Second by Ms. Spencer. All in favor? And that is approved. We have first readings on four items. The first one is Ordinance 2020 22, which amends the zoning ordinance. So to allow winery vineyard as a conditional use in C2, before we will declare that first reading, I'll let the planning director come and provide us with some information. And then we have a number of people who would like to make comments about this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a request by Amanda Cozine uh, to amend the text of the Greenwood County Zoning Ordinance to provide exceptional conditions for wineries and vineyards as an allowed use in C2. Um, she is proposing uh, that the uh, ordinance be amended to allow for these type of uses for uh, five uh, particular conditions, that the housing for the manufacture of wine be within an approved structure, that South Carolina state permits have been approved for the use, that an outdoor event venue space may be utilized as a secondary use to the winery and shall operate on a limited basis to the primary use, uh, that they may utilize um, different parking um, um, uh, and entranceway surfaces such as asphalt, concrete, pressure run, gravel, or grass surface, um, and that the required number of handicapped accessible parking spaces be paved with asphalt, asphalt or concrete. Um, that is, uh, this is a, currently an allowed use within a, uh, the C2 zone. Um, however, uh, she is proposing that this be a conditional use with those conditions placed on it. The Planning Commission um, looked at the request and, and they would recommend approval of items A, B, and C and the removal of D and E. Is this an allowed use inside of the city? Inside the city of Greenwood? Yes. Um, it is in a particular zone. I don't know exactly what zone it would be um, if they were to annex into the city limits. So you're saying in our ordinance we're changing it so it's Conditional use in C2. Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions by council? Where's the location? Um, she is particularly wanting to locate her business on Old Mount Mariah Road. Um, however, this would apply to all C2 zone properties in the county. Mr. Allison, you have a question? I just uh, I, I didn't quite understand hearing you through the mask. I know you're being respectful of everybody. I, I have a hard time hearing for these masks. Yes, sir. You said that they had asked for several items and the they, they recommended all of them but the last two? That's correct. And what, what are those two conditions? The two conditions are the um, parking and entrance way um, standards. Um, the planning commission felt that uh, this use should have Page parking just like all other uses. Um, the, the fifth item deals with handicapped accessible spaces, and if you remove that, then they would have to be paved uh, with asphalt or concrete anyway. So it's kind of redundant to, to say that um, okay. if you remove item D. Thank you. Do we have do we have any consideration by the planning commission? Is there any? For years, I have had. A concern about paving everything and water can run through unpaved areas and and once you pave it then you've got runoff and you have storm drainage problems and you have adjacent property problems and um, in a use like this could certain stone or some kind of uh, natural drain be better than requiring pavement kind of like we did with the um, wedding venues when we allowed them to have stone I think instead of we required the handicap parking but we allowed the parking area to be unpaved um, I'm just asking the question I may be way off base but I'm, I'm you know every time we pave something and you know asphalt is not 
the greatest thing in the world that causes us problems, et cetera. Yes, sir. We actually use the rural event venue as a template for this particular use and what Ms. Cozian is asking for. Because um, her use as a winery and a vineyard has kind of a rural character to it, that's why she's requesting that because having asphalt is more permanent uh, for that type of use and just seems out of character. And um, she will certainly um, address you because, uh, with her concerns about. Um, so, so to answer Mr. Allison's question, um, she asked for it not to be paid, is that correct? Yes. And the planning commission recommended pay. Yes. So we've got to decide if we want to agree with that part of the planning commission. What was the other one that he asked you about beside the? Uh, uh, an okay. alternate paving surface and the handicap accessible uh, parking space is being paved. Okay. okay. And the recommendation was that handicap spaces do have to be paved regardless, yeah. correct? Correct. <laughs> that's right. And that's in keeping with what we did earlier with the, with the wedding paving. Yes. Okay. That's right. But, but you're saying that you're recommending yes. that it be paved. Yes. Okay. From the right, Any other questions about recommending recommending that handicap spaces or in, in its entirety? Recommending paving from the planning commission. That was what the recommendation was. And the entire the in its entirety. Yes. Parking lot. All right, Bill, and if there's no questions. Then um, tonight we have uh, Steve Dorn, 13, 113 High Street, which is one two provide some comments on this matter. Is Steve here? Yes. Yeah, he I'm going to pull my mask back. Okay. Um, I'm about architectural services for the Cozines for this winery and renovating the, uh, the old uh, farmhouse that's there. And uh, they've gone to great lengths to preserve the character of it. They're looking to do a winery, but so occasionally have wine tasting on a weekend or something require maybe a dozen more parking spaces. But on a day-to-day -day basis, they don't have to have, they won't be that many people there. There's going to be two or three employees doing the wine. So I think from a professional standpoint, from an architectural standpoint, I agree that the rural nature of this is, is more enhanced by not having asphalt pavement out there. you got the bridge right across the street. It's got all that asphalt, and it's sitting there vacant. So um, I think if we did some nice stone and had a paved parking for the handicap, naturally we could put in a handicap ramp. We upgraded the building, the handicapped bathrooms and all that. So uh, that's all been done to code. And uh, I would recommend that uh, not have to require all that parking to be paid because it's only a once in a while thing. It's like a wedding venue. It's only going to happen maybe once or twice a month. So um, having all that asphalt out there sitting there, or, you know, it'll be used twice a month. It's kind of it's expensive and it's kind of, Detrimental, as you pointed out, Mr. Brown. I just want to make those comments. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Dolan? Thank you. Thank y'all. Next chair, 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 I do have one. Okay, Mr. Dolan. Steve, yes. what's the total area mass of the, if, if we were to require to pay the whole thing, what's the whole area mass? Well, that's what you see, it's a big site. Uh, the property is huge. The, the winery is a little white house right there in the triangle corner. Right. And they just want to park right there. The rest of it may be vineyards and uh, a small building where they, where they do the wine. So maybe, maybe that question is to Phil. Phil, how large is the parking area? How much parking would be? The entire parking area. How large? <coughs> it's based on the occupancy of the structure. So it's one for every three seats. So based on how many people they plan to accommodate at the site will depend on how, how large parking area would be required and they could probably accommodate 30 people maybe but you know they're not gonna they're not gonna hold huge meetings i mean it's a wine tasting you couldn't hardly accommodate 60 80 people so it'd be about 30 people which would mean 10 parking spaces but uh we'd have to determine that this is a new thing to bring a wine so we're trying to get some rules set up that will accommodate this because i i think they're gonna do very well and something unique for Greenwood that'll attract out of that, out of town people to come to Greenwood to, to see a vineyard, a winery, because they and the vineyards because they do it all the time. Aiken and all around the state. Thank you. Okay. Is it Cozen? Yes, sir. Miranda Cozen? Yes. 
um, who lives at 1251 Highway 56 South yes, in Clinton. Yes, he wishes to speak to us. Yes, sir. Thank y'all for hearing us out tonight. Speak up now, so Let me get over here to the microphone. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, thank y'all. I hope you're having a good evening. So I don't have a lot of new besides what Steve just covered, but to clarify parking, what we were thinking, regardless of the material, is the house. The property, because some of that triangle is still wooded, we would leave that for now because it has to be in phases. Um, but the property beside it that goes to the other line, we were going to put vineyards there. So that's what you see when you're inside and outside. Parking, we were thinking at the road, like facing the road. So it would be right beside the vineyard. So we were just thinking, um, and we actually didn't know that we had to pay the parking tax. We bought it and started working on it. And we were like, oh, no, that's detrimental. So we're just kind of worried that it's just going to take away. If you guys have been to vent venues or wineries, they're just not. I mean, it's a country escape from the city feel, and we just feel like it would just completely destroy the unique characteristics of a winery that we're trying to have close to the city but outside so that it's just somewhere besides a bar or a restaurant because that's why we started asking for it because we were going to be considered a bar because there's no there's no category for winery so we started talking to Phil and thinking how can we well, we couldn't be ag because you can't sell the wine you can make it but you can't sell it there and have like a, a wine tasting um, so we just thought the best thing was to ask you guys to give us our own category with the natural parking um, so that we could be a natural winery and not like a bar or a restaurant or a store. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, in the upper triangle there, on the right side, what is, what is that property? The, that's not yellow yes yeah, that is somebody else's property and that's another thing when you were talking um so there is a home there and there is another one on the right side and they have not argued about what we're doing there but i know that the asphalt there would even just be up near their property too you know and that's their home so the other question i have you're saying you want your business do you have the uh, the grapes already Planted? We cannot plant them till November because it's too hot. And since we just bought this property in July, um, we are having it cleared as we speak and leveled out. So we will have it prepared for planting in November. And we plan to plant most of that besides the parking. And you don't plan to sell the wine that you make, you plan to... Yes, sir. We will make the wine there. We have a, we'll have an approved building, like Phil discussed, sure. um, and we will make it there. Um, we will be like, um, if you've ever been to Cityscape or any of the wineries in North Carolina, you go, yeah. you can have a tasting and a cheese tray or chocolate tray, or you can get a bottle to go. Um, we're planning on having couches and fire pits around bags. You can sit around outside and enjoy the scenery. So yes, you will drink the wine there or take it with you and we will make it there. Yes. And you sell it. I mean, and sell it there. there. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Just one, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, do I understand that you don't have a problem paving the handicap spaces is the rest of the parking that you do. The rest of it. And we understand, you know, the handicap being paved and that's that's we're fine with that, but the rest of it, you know. That makes sense. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Cozy, same address. Yes sir. You must have a connection to Miranda. Yeah, small one. That's my one. <laughs> Um, yeah, Manny and I did this as a dream for her. It's more her project. That's why she stood up as the owner of it, because she is. Um, I work full-time in construction, but I'm helping her try to get the property ready to go and, and established um, through the construction phases. As Steve said, um, and she, she mentioned, the, the parking would be parallel to Mount Mariah Road. So you come into the, the existing lot, and our plan is to clear parallel and create potentially a horseshoe type parking area where you'll pull in, pull out without having to turn back into traffic. That would create a smooth transition in and out. We'd also keep the rest of that field open for vineyards. And then grassed areas where people could bring chairs. If we have, you know, there's gonna be um, potentially some live music outdoors where we get some local talent to come in and maybe play some music in the afternoons. The hours for this type of business 
are going to be seasonally typical during the day. So um, right now we're looking at Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, um, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock at the earliest, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, typically at the latest. Um, it's um, <clears throat> like Mandy said, the whole idea, our request for this all was um, because we have the zoning that allows us to have a bar or a restaurant. So when we started this whole process, Steve said, well, which one are you? I said, Steve, we're neither. We're, we're not a bar. We never want to be a bar. And we're not a restaurant. We don't serve food. We serve cheese trays, small bites, things like that. But neither one of those apply. So we kicked it around and kicked it around. And finally we said, the thing is, there's no zoning that allows us. It doesn't talk to what we are. Because really what we are is an outdoor venue. We have a tasting room inside for people, but it's small. And typically you'd come through a, through a winery like this. You'd sit down with, you know, with your party. You'd spend a half an hour or so trying our different wines, little tastes, maybe enjoy a cheese tray. But then typically people move outside. They could pick which one they like and sit down with friends and talk outside. So it's heavily geared, especially in the pretty months, to be outside. So that's why the aesthetics of the property is so important to us, that we keep it as natural and as r rustic as we can, you know, because it is an escape. It, it's where people can get away from the city that's not very many miles away down the road and we have an alternative to that. Um, <clears throat> so we're just really, really um, concerned about the black top type asphalt being an eyesore to the rest of what we are because in, th in, in theory, a winery is a farm. We're gonna, we're gonna produce, we're gonna grow, you know, and, and we're gonna harvest those, those grapes. We're gonna turn that into a product that hopefully is good enough that people like it enough to come back and wanna try it again. So. We want to try to keep that farm, you know, idea as, as possible. And, and blacktop and asphalt with paving, because we're talking about striping and signage. And that really is just destroys the whole aesthetic of the green space that we're trying to trying to create there. Um, Any other questions? Yeah, I have one question. Um, since you're a contractor, what are you going to do for your buffering that will keep the noise away from your neighbors that are close to you. So will you think in terms of what type of buffering you need? Well, there's already some established buffer zone. The neighbor to, I guess, if you're looking at pictorially from here, the south, the long straight side of the property, um, there's a series of trees that he's already got, big evergreen type trees to grow up. Obviously the front, um, the main road on Old Mount Mariah, it's in really a retail commercial space across the street. And then there's also a tree line that actually outlines that, that other smaller property um, on the corner up there. And behind that is, I believe that's a concrete company. So it, it's a unique space where we got a lot of different things around us and we're, we've carved it out to where we're trying to create a little quiet space. So I hope not to be, we don't ever intend to be the loud neighbor, you know? Um, but there is plenty of, and then the back whole piece, the whole 50% part of that property is all wooded. So everything is buffered in the back part of that. Thank you. Mr. Chair, how many yeah. acres is the total? It's just <laughs> under six acres. Right under six acres? For the whole, there's two parcels there that make up the whole okay. plaque. But the usable space today is, I would say, just about 3.2 acres. Any other questions? How much of that will be in meters? I would say potentially almost just under two acres, I would think, by the time we're done. With obviously the potential to continue to grow that. There's another pastured out area behind. There's a tree line there. You can't really see it in the tree. But the gentleman that owned it before, it, they raised cattle there. There's chicken coops. There's a fenced in cattle area where he had cows and goats and all kinds of things. If, you know, we got to do it in phases, obviously, but our, our hope would be that we could continue to grow and continue to take more of that space and, and add more vineyard as we went along. But to start out, we'll be about two acres. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. This ends our public comment. There's no one else that has asked to speak. Um, Thank you. So I will read the ordinance. Ordinance 2020-22, which means William County Zoning Ordinance, so that 
Um, it will allow a winery slash vineyard as a conditional use in situ general commercial zoning district. That is first reading and title only. Bill, I would um, ask, it sounds like some sentiment, not just myself, but I heard, I believe some others that are interested in possibly not requiring the paving. Um, by second reading, I guess, if, if we were to do that, I'm sure you would want to look at it and, and maybe offer us an amendment to what we're doing on first reading. I mean, other than us just saying, no, we're not going to require paving, don't you need an opportunity to, to look at it? No, sir. What they are presenting to you tonight would allow for that to go through. So if you are in favor of not having that in place, then you would need to, to pass um, the items that are provided to you from the cousins. Okay. So we've taken first reading and title only, but my point is the zoning commission recommended something different. They just asked that you not pass, or recommended that you not pass items D and E. So if you choose to have that, you would just put back in place items D and E. That's, that's, and that's what I'm asking, and I would ask the attorney would we need to amend the ordinance to include that on second reading if that's what council desires? I think you could just, Mr. Chairman, if I would, yeah. if you would, I think you could approve as presented minus letter D or include letter D minus letter E. Minus E. And E is paid a lot. Paid in. What is D? D gives, D gives you the ability to have asphalt, concrete, crusher run, gravel, or grass service. D. D, 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 D as presented would allow you to have asphalt, concrete, okay. crusher run, gravel, or grass services. Okay. And E. And E. Yeah, actually, you would want to you would want to accept it as thing. presented. You want to pass all five. Right. D D gives you the options of services. Asphalt, concrete, crusher, and gravel, or grass. And then E requires payment for the handicapped accessible spaces only. So you could you could approve it as presented. Okay. Do y'all understand that? Yes. Okay. All right, that's first reading only. I second the ordinance uh, for first reading is ordinance 2020-23, which amends the zoning ordinance so that two tracts of land totaling 343 acres at 2017 County Farm Road uh, changes the zoning classification from R2 single family, AG1 agricultural, and R5 multifamily to I1 light industrial field. Yes, sir. Uh, this is uh, 343 acres, two tracts of land, um, an unaddressed parcel, as well as a parcel identified as 2710 County Farm Road. The applicant is Sweetwater Solar LLC. Uh, the um, request is to uh, develop the site as a solar farm um, with 34 megawatts equivalent to uh, about uh, 8,500 homes uh, for electrical use. The intended lifespan is 35 to 40 years um, and they would also be providing a decommissioning plan as part of the requirements for a solar farm. Um, it has three zoning categories on it right now, and the request is to modify the um, property to I-1 line industrial. Uh, the Planning Commission would recommend approval. Any questions of Bill? I noticed the staff denied the regulated denial. Can you tell us why? Sure. Um, even though we don't have a problem with the intended use, um, the future land use plan calls for this area to be low density residential. And because of that, we have to make a recommendation to something of a residential category. Because the I-1 is an industrial category, we can't um, recommend approval for that. But um, like was mentioned at the Planning Commission meeting, we don't have a particular um, concern with the, the use um, just of that. Also, as an aside, um, the, um, the property owner um, spoke at the public hearing and said that they plan to uh, um, put on a covenant inscription on the property so that no industrial use could be utilized on the site besides a silver farm. How about adjacent property owners, uh, homeowners, did they, did they appear? 
We sent 80 letters to adjacent property owners and had no one to uh, oppose the request. Okay. Give, give me an idea. I don't have my, my uh, computer with me, but exactly where it is on the county phone board. Uh, if you know where the five points intersection is, and yeah. just, Susan, if you could forward it to the. I, you asked me to take these slides out. Uh, no, just the slides for the. It's um, just right after you. For Sweetwater so Right after you pass Triangle Hardware. So. Um, it's at Five Points Intersection, and it's directly south of that. And it'd be to the right? No, sir. It's it's um, a large piece it's of property. Right. I, I have, um, it's by CBMW uh, Properties, um, has a majority of that 300 acres. There is only one residential house, uh, the old uh, the old two-story brick house. That's on, that's on the same side of the road? Yes, sir. That's correct. I know when I was with the city, there was some talk about putting residential back there, but it never works out. Uh, uh, is there utilities back there for residential? Very limited. Very limited. Is it on down the road going toward 34? Is it there a little subdivision, big developer right there on the left? Yes. Before Small. you get to the goat farm, I call it. Fair portion. We're talking about a dozen houses there. Yes. As um, have we been contacted by the owner? Not that I'm aware of. I was trying to. Um, James and I were just trying to figure out. I do not believe this is any of the ones we've incentivized either through Pine Gate, GS1, any of the solar deals we've done, or the one tonight. Um, I have not talked to anyone. Well, we can uh, take first reading in time only tonight, and I assume that the owner and whoever will be here at the public hearing to provide us with additional information. Thank you, Phil. Next item is Ordinance 2024 to create a special tax district to be comprised of real property within Hammond Woods subdivision. Um, do you have anything to add, uh, County Treasurer? No, sir. Um, this is in first reading only. Uh, ordinance 2025 creates a special tax district uh, for Rock Creek subdivision. Those are first reading and title only. Um, any other matters? If not, district reports, Ms. Childs. Um, again, just want to be about our three uh, testing. We still have two more that we're going to do. The next will be September 15th over at Macedonia. And the last one will be September 30th down at Mid Post 224. And that will be from 10 to 2 for those who have not been tested. Okay. We did the one down at our South Main. We had 118 that were tested, and two of those were positive. Mr. Allison. Number four from District. Mr. Boggs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're hearing a lot of information about COVID, and that's important, and I think we all need to stay up to date. But I was thinking the other day, I see some advertisements on how are we doing with the 2020 census? Uh, what kind of response are we getting countywide? Uh, are we 50%, 50, 60? Does anybody know? We the last report I got was 60. 60%. 60%. 60%. That's remarkable because I've heard Greenville, Greenville's up at 47. Yeah, 60. So that's good. I just encourage so that's everyone. The county, that's the county now. The city is at 58, I believe, or 52. Well, I'm, I'm just yeah. looking at the whole county. Well, we have 60. The county is at 60. The census, the, the census is critically important. To our future and to the funding that we will receive from the federal government and we don't need to miss people because we don't need to be short any funds from the good feds so i encourage everyone to if you haven't done the census fill it out turn it in participate be a good citizen thank you that is my homework in connection with that one day this week i received an email and they're asking the county to designate a person bill are you aware of that email I received anything last week. 
Say that. I can't hear you with that mask on. I haven't heard anything within the last week from the census. Well, they're asking for the county to designate uh, one person that will assist if there's people who who may be having difficulty completing this, they're asking for a county to designate. Um, Mr. Manager, I will send you that email. Um, but um, they're trying to pick up those that, that have not filled out the application. Um, and I know um, I saw this weekend where uh, since as people had left a note on somebody's door stating that they had been there and asking them to call them. Yeah. I think it's important. Well, my, my belief, Chairman, is those census workers are, are, are following that list of households that haven't filled out their census because they came to my house and they and I happened to be mowing grass and I hadn't done mine at that time and they enrolled me electronically asked the questions, took took the report and put me in. Good for you. Mr. Templeton. Just want to remind everybody uh, to keep um, our school districts in your thoughts and prayers. As you know, our teachers do so much more than teach and are being asked to do. Um, so many different things now. We've got some teaching, um, you know, regular school, if you will, A day, B day, um, online so you know virtual so there's uh, as many challenges as they have before all this they have even more now so i would just ask you to continue to uh keeping your thoughts and prayers not only our teachers but the administration the you know the transportation folks the the all the support staff and cafeteria workers to uh, uh, janitorial folks who are keeping our teachers and students safe that's it mr chairman mr lane Yes, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to commend the county staff for the work that was done in helping put together our distribution program for our mask through the United Way. I thought the manager came up with a great idea of utilizing the county fire stations to assure that we had a saturation countywide. I want to thank Ms. McIntyre, too, for working on the billboard um, project. I think, that, um, I think that's sending the right message, and I just want to thank you all for that. I think that's going very well. Uh, all is well in District 7, Chairman. Mr. Manager, I don't have the report. Do you have a report? Not, not Mr. Chairman. Oh, here it is. It was from this uh, South Carolina Association of Counties. It said that uh, on Saturday, September the 26th, um, statewide civic engagement day will take place. The objective of this event is to offer a one-stop shop for residents to complete the census and have access to COVID testing, free flu shots, and voter and absentee. Uh, we need your help by identifying a county employee who can serve as the point of contact for this event in your county. This person will work with county officials to identify the best site location for the event as well as coordinate the logistics and local event partners. Please send your staff contact information <laughs> by Wednesday, September the 1st to Susan at SCAC. A complete count is critical for local governments to receive their fair share of resources from any federal and state programs for the next 10 years. Additionally, the restricted period for census completion has negatively impacted the U.S. Census Bureau's ability to recruit, hire, and retain census takers to the effort to achieve a complete count for our state fails heavily falls heavily on local and nonprofit partners the final push will take place during september and we'll end on september 30th i will send that to you i actually know that you read it i, I remember saying that as well you have to see that I'm so, okay we'll take care of it tomorrow all right uh, you have a report no. madam attorney yes, Clerk? No report. Okay, and you know, with no other business, then we will adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, folks, for coming. Thanks. Good before, deal. Before everybody leaves, Marcel's asked that we take a picture all wearing these for the